Good evening, everyone. Let's give the Lord a hand. So for this week's topic, got me thinking about one of my jobs I had. It's actually one of my first real jobs. I used to work at Nordstrom. If you guys know what Nordstrom is, it's like a high retail store. And I was there like seven years. So Nordstrom is known for their elite customer service. So one of the things that I learned there was how to serve. And that's the topic today. It's called learning to properly serve. So at North Shore, when I was there, this was back in 86. I started at the DC, which is the distribution center. And you would think, okay, just working at a warehouse, what can you learn how to serve there? But as time went on, they ingrained with you. They have an in-store. I kind of talked about it before, but they have an in-store um, HR department, and they're really, really good. So these guys... They, they have meetings. If you want to, you can sign up every week, and they just teach you customer service, how to talk to people, how to treat people, all the above. And it was kind of funny. Um, I'm going to use this chair for a second. But one of the things that they do when you get called into a meeting, you don't sit behind a desk like somebody else would normally have you sit. They have you sit in a chair like this, and then they'll come in a chair. They'll bring the chair out and sit right there in front of you, and you're like this close. So it's kind of awkward, but... What that, what that shows is that, you know, it's just transparent, and they were really good. So I learned a lot of good stuff there. Um, over time, I got promoted to the stores. I was working in the, one of the stores, and um, even with all the employees, they tell you you can never park in the front. Like, even, like, say, here, how we all park in the front, it was mandatory that you had to park. They had designated parking way on the back, so that's, like, serving properly. So I was there about seven years. I learned a lot of good stuff. And um, a lot of that stuff I use now. And it got me thinking about serving. And my wife and I were talking. So we've been here, as you know, like almost 10 years. And we started at the Osgood Church. So there's a few of us that have been in the Osgood Church, the Jangs, Elder Jangs, um, uh, APC. He was there. Uh, Will and Sue, Deacon Lanson wrote it. But a lot of us were taught how to serve there. And it was like we laugh about it now because it was boot camp for us. And they would always say that Osgood training was like boot camp. So when you got taught how to serve there, you don't just, like, get a job, learn how to do a job. You stayed with that job. And they told you that every time you get a job or you're assigned a job, you do not leave that or you're leaving your post. It's like the military, right? So over time, uh, one of the things that we always had to do was clean the restrooms. So we cleaned the restrooms for like, I don't know, seven, eight years. And they had like a bunch of stalls there. And everybody, had, there was a lot of people who helped cook and clean. And, you know, a lot of us learned how to serve. But when you come over, when we came over to here, we brought that same mentality of serving. And it wasn't just the regular serving. Like back then, there was a smaller group. So you have to understand, like, there was like... There was a lot of work, but there was more to go around. There was more of work to go around for us. And I remember even, like, learning how to serve like that. I had some concept of serving through Nordstrom. But when we came to to Osgood and was taught there, it was really, it was kind of taken to another level. It was like a much bigger purpose, right, working for God. I remember one time in um, impartation, you guys ever want to, learn some things, go to impartation. I always talk to Robert about that, Robert and May. But in impartation one time, we had been cleaning the restrooms for a couple years, and uh, the the Lord spoke through Pastor Eugene and said, I'm actually giving you these jobs. I'm setting these jobs up to bless you. And we just thought, man, who does that? That's, like, so awesome. And we just, you know, it's really a much bigger purpose than you think. It's not just about doing a job. It's really about working for the Lord. Amen? Another time when we were in impartation, uh, we had been cleaning restrooms, of course, and um, we did something where we are just like really scrubbing the floors and whatnot, and um, one of the words that we got there, too, was the Lord said, when you clean the bathrooms, it's like cleaning my body. And I'm, I'm telling you, I've been cleaning bathrooms for years. And even when I was at Nordstrom and I got promoted to the store, I was the, 
the store cleaning manager. So I was in charge of the whole store and cleaning, and that nothing compared there to cleaning the restrooms at God's house, especially when you heard something like that. So it was pretty awesome. I learned a lot there. Uh, we, we brought it here. And a lot of times my wife and I talk about, you know, how good God is. So even though it's considered work or chores, it's really a privilege to come here and serve for God. If you can pull up Matthew 20. So Jesus himself, he came not to be served, but to serve. Matthew 20, verse 28 just as a son of man did not come to, be, come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And when you think about that, when he went to the cross for us, there's nothing bigger that any, anybody or anything can ever be done to serve like he did. He had to humble himself in order to, be, to give that type of service. I know recently um, some of the ladies were texted and they went to go help my YPJ and Megan and I helped them serve at their house and help them organize and clean up and whatnot and they just they did a great job and I think um, YPJ and Megan were very grateful so that's there's there's always some way to serve in God's house so whether it be at his house or it could be for somebody so if you ever want to know what's for you you can just ask God God show me how you would like me to serve and he'll show you. It was funny this morning. Um, I was actually working, and then I sometimes I just get hungry. I work from home, so I went downstairs and I seen Sarah in the kitchen, and I said, um, "Hey, so what are you gonna have for breakfast?" And she's like doing her thing, and I thought, "Okay, well I'll just let her finish." And and I thought, "I think maybe I'll have an omelet. I don't know. I'll I'll come back." So I went back upstairs, and about. 10, 15 minutes later, she came down and brought me this beautiful omelet with bacon and salsa. It was like the best omelet ever. So I would just, she, she served me, and I was done. Praise God. I was like so happy. So thanks, Sarah. It got me thinking about some of the stories in the Bible. Um, the one about the, uh, the ten virgins. So with the ten virgins, there was five of them that were prepared and there was five of them that were not prepared. And it's basically the bridegroom was going to come and for the wedding feast, but some of the virgins did not have oil in the lamp. The oil represents the Holy Spirit. So they were not prepared. And what that showed them is that they did not have readiness or even faithfulness to be ready for God. And we always want to be ready. So even when we come here and we think we're just coming to church or we're you know, we're listening to sermons or worshiping. You're actually serving. You're serving God by being here. It's a choice. And, you know, even like uh, I was just joking with Miss Liz a minute ago that this is the Friday Night Skeleton Crew because this, these are like, you guys are like the diehards that come here. So Jesus will look at that. You guys will be blessed for that. If you can pull up uh, Philippians 2. It says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility. So I'm going to stop there because in order for you to serve properly, you have to have a sense of humility. Humility equals how good you can serve. You have to lower yourself. You have to die to yourself like Jesus did in order to serve at the highest level. Value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Verse 6. Who, being in very nature, God did not consider equality with God, but something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in the appearance of man. He humbled himself. He became obedient to death, even death on a cross. So that's the ultimate way to serve. He humbled himself. He was obedient. And, you know, he could have said, like, you know, I come from heaven. I'm, you know, this is my God. I mean, do you know who I am? But he came to show us something. He came to show us, and 
it's to our advantage as we're here and we're learning how do we need to learn how to serve. And I, we've always been told, too, like if you're walking throughout the church or something comes up and you see it, you own it. For example, um, even back at Osgood, I remember it was like a the, um, the altar was kind of like a little, some of you guys will know, it was like a little square, but the floor was really big. It was like way bigger than this. And um, sometimes it would get hot in there. So, um, you know, we would run the air sometimes, but sometimes we just needed something a little more. And we just decided, you know, for God, we just bought a couple fans. And we just did it, not telling anybody, we did it in private. And we just did it just because, you know, it was for serving God. So those are the kind of things you may see, whether you you could be cleaning a restroom, you could be... Um, I know like every Sunday, I always tell Will his house in heaven's going to be huge because he walks around with this garbage and he's getting everybody's trash while we're over here chit-chatting and eating. But um, So that's just the way, another way to serve. So serving, very important, equals humility. In order for you to be serving at a high level, you have to humble yourself. You can't be too big on yourself because sometimes you're going to be put in a position where you're going to have to cover somebody. You're going to have to, somebody just going to have to be taken care of. And you may, you know, it may be a loss for you, maybe a loss of money, but it's something that you do for God. And if you're willing to do it for God, it actually will come, become easier. So we don't want to think too highly of ourselves. You know, a lot of times, even when we came too, we didn't really, I knew something about service, but as far as serving for God, we really didn't know everything. And so we went to that boot camp, right? So the Jangs know, they, they've been through that. And uh, so we came here, when did we leave Osgood? 2017? Yeah, we came here in 2013 to visit, and we moved in 14. So we're here about three years in that boot camp, right? But it was good. It was like, you know, we were grateful. We think about it, and we're thinking like, yeah, I remember those times, and, and we were just, everybody always did everything. So praise God. Another thing about serving, and this is kind of a, this is a fine line here, is that sometimes when we're here and we're being, like Pastor says, he's the one that God will use to help us, to correct us, to discipline us. And when that happens, it's, you want to make sure when that happens that you are open and you're willing to go with the flow of the Holy Spirit, right? And because it's a fine line. I mean, even Bishop Kim says it could be paper thin and you can get offended. And anybody who's offended cannot properly serve. And we've been there too, and it's like a battle. It's this inner battle. You know, it's like your flesh is fighting. And let's, I mean, let's face it, we come here and we all have... We come in the flesh. We don't know a lot about Jesus, and we're learning. So when these things come over, it's to your advantage to really try to work with what God's trying to show you. It's, it's for your own good, and also he wants to take you to another level to serve him. So that's the purpose. So something pretty incredible in the Bible, you guys know this story, it's about Jesus, how he washed the disciples' feet. If you can pull up John 13, and just to make it a little more interesting, I needed a little prop here, so I have, um, I have um, I'm going to call up somebody who's going to represent Peter real quick, and that's going to be my wife. So Jesus, he, Jesus came and he washed the disciples' feet. And that was unheard of because only servants were the ones who washed, washed the, uh, the authorities' feet. So if Peter can come and sit down here. So the disciples, it says in the story that he was washing their feet, but when he got to Peter, something happened, right? So I'll just go ahead and read it, and then we'll just go along with this. It was just before the Passover festival, Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Verse 2, the evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. 
So he got up from the meal. He took off his outer clothing. And if you read in the commentary that said when he took off that outer clothing, it was like he was like vulnerable. He, he opened himself up to serve. And sometimes we need to do that, right? We have to be able to take that outer layer, that remember that covering that we might be hiding behind. And in this case, Jesus was going to serve his people, and that's why he took off that clothing. And wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. So that was like considered one of the most humbling things that somebody could do. They could... They would go and, you know, the person they were, it was the servant that would wash the master's feet or somebody who was in authority. So Jesus replied, oh, here we go. Uh, he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now I'm going, what I'm doing, but later you will understand. And then Peter said, you want me to wash your feet? No. No. He said No. He did not want to wash his feet. So Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. So, so it's about part of the humility, right? Not only what Jesus was showing the disciples, but he was like showing them that you also have to humble yourself in order to do this. So I'm actually going to go through this. I've never washed your feet before. This is weird. <laughs> I even asked her last week if she wanted to go get her nail, her toenails done. She refused. She said, like, Peter, no. So here we go. God blessed her anyway. Yo, he says where it's too short, but you're going to see on the next verse. Why it was short, okay? Thank you, Peter. Honey. So Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. So she was already clean, so she took a bath before she came. So do, not, uh, do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so. For that is what I am. Now that I am your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you can also wash one another's feet. So because who he was and at his level, if he can do this, who are we, right? So he's trying to teach them something. Humble yourself so you can serve. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who has sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed. And the key word is if. If you do them. And it is not easy to serve. I want to talk a little bit about that because when you serve, sometimes you're, you come here like a lot of us work on Friday. We come on Friday night or, you know, like even for us, some of the tiredest days for us is Sunday. You know, we worked all week. Um, for whatever reason, it just seems to catch up on you on Sunday. And we're tired, but you know what? It's irrelevant if you're tired. It's irrelevant if you just don't feel like it. Because if Jesus didn't feel like it, we wouldn't be here today, right? There wouldn't be a cross. So we come and when we choose to serve, and when it says if, We choose to serve because it's just the right thing to do. It's for God. There shouldn't be any reason why we should not be serving or helping each other or even going the extra mile for even God's house, whether it be money. God has given us all really good jobs and time. I mean, even for us, we never worked from home before, and we just seem like we have a lot of time. So we just try to do what we can to um, give God more of our time. I remember pastors were saying way back when that if God starts opening time up for you, he's asking more time for, you know, he wants more time from you. Whether it be praying, reading, 
or maybe even serving. So the question is, if you're not at that level yet, if you haven't really served or you want to learn how to serve or maybe you served in the past and maybe um, maybe you just somehow got out of it, because sometimes it happens, you know, sometimes things happen, your schedule will change. And there was times where people were serving, especially you guys during revival, and the leaders will know this, that when we go through revival, it's a very trying time. You know, it's very tiring. There's a lot of work. And, um, you know, we need workers. And, you know, sometimes we'll ask for the volunteers. Sometimes people will take it. And sometimes they'll just drop out. Or they just will say no. And, you know, everybody has a choice. But that's why it says if. Because not everybody wants to do it. But then again, not everybody's going to be blessed. Can you pull up Luke 10? There's a story of Martha and Mary. It's a really pretty interesting story. There's a part in there where it says uh, Martha sat, excuse me, uh, Mary sat intently showing great effort and attention. So when Jesus, and I'll read the story. But he was, those, they were a Lazarus. Martha and Mary were considered his best friends. While Jesus and his followers, they were traveling, Jesus went into a town. A woman named Martha let Jesus stay at her house. Martha had a sister named Mary who was sitting at the Lord's feet and listening to him teach. The other version said she was intently. That means like really paying attention and just willing to give your full effort. So she was really like this, right? She was at his feet, just like submitting to him, full, sub, uh, full submission. Martha had a sister named Mary uh, sitting at the Lord's feet and listened to him teach. Uh, what he said, his word, message, sitting at the, teach, the teacher's feet indicates the position of a disciple. And a lot of the commentaries say that even though there was the 12 disciples, there were other disciples and they believe Mary, and some of them were also his disciples. They were just not listed as that, but she was behaving just like one of the disciples, and as you can see. But Martha was busy, worried, distracted with all the work to be done, the many preparations. She went in and said, Lord, don't you even care that my sister has left me alone to do all the work? So she's kind of like scolding and like, this is like wrong, right? She's like trying to... Uh, you know, correct the Lord. But she's saying, don't you even care? And he says, um, tell her to, she says, tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried, anxious, upset about many things. Only one thing is important, necessary, needed. Mary has chosen the better thing, and it will never be taken away from her. So the Lord knew his time was short. And when he came, uh, Martha, Mary this was kind of a test. You know, it could be very natural like this. You, you look at the story and you think, well, they had to eat. He was probably hungry. He had been on the, went on the road. So she goes and cooks him something. But Mary took the time to go and sit at his feet, fully submit to him, and be willing to listen to him and listen to what he had to teach because his time was limited. And she was also considered like a disciple. So Martha, as you continue looking at this says that she was very distracted you know she was uh, the commentary says that when you're that distracted you can actually have false humility you can have a lot of insecurities so if when she came and it seemed like you know she's part of them she was actually very she had some other alternative some other motive and she got upset and that's usually even for us now that's always a time how you can tell whether God's trying to get something out of you You'll go through some natural circumstance, some natural thing. God will give you a job here, something, or somebody will make a mistake, and it comes back on you. That's, what, that's that little thing that's inside you that God wants out. And he wants that out so you can be better for him. You can flow with him better. You can serve, and you can be a humble person. But a lot of that false humility, a lot of that sense of insecurity well, actually, can get you and start leaning you into the area of offense. So we have to be very careful with that. The commentary also talks about 
there's uh, it's like shows like it showed that um, Martha had a lack of trust in God. She was more concerned about her personal circumstances, and she was very distracted. She was like so willing to make up this food, and she probably was a good cook, but you know he wasn't going to be there. What if he was going to be there twenty minutes? And you know she spent all that time in the kitchen. So we we have to be open and be willing to see humble ourselves so we can be uh, fully submissive to God, to, his, to our authorities, our leaders. Amen? So her motive to serve was probably wrong. But see, um, Jesus even said that Mary has chosen a better thing, and I will never, um, it will never be taken away from her. So she actually passed her test. There's a lot of ways we can serve, and one of the things I wanted to talk about is like in 2020, pastor um, told all the leaders um, to get your passport, and we were one of them. So 2020 was like around COVID time. I don't remember exactly what was going on, but there was, a, you know, with us, we were in, um, we actually had, you know, we have a big house, the, there was a big uh, mortgage. And uh, long story short, there was somebody there, and they got pulled out. And then a lot of that got, um, a lot of that came on us. So we just took care of it. We had to. But when we were told in 2020 to get the passports, um, we actually made five different appointments. So you have to make it through the, uh, through the uh, post office. And some of you who have done this, you, you can... They're like what, $250, somewhere around there each. Yeah, somewhere around there. So at that time, we just didn't have a lot of money. We were kind of strapped. And um, so we were thinking about that. So we just thought, okay, let's just put it off. It was COVID. Okay, where are we going to go? So see, we started thinking, in our, thinking on our own. We started like walking in the flesh. We weren't really thinking. Again, this is three years ago. And hopefully our mentality has changed since then. But um, a lot of things that we're, we were thinking at the time is that we had no money. COVID had been going on for a couple of years. Uh, we were in discipline, so we were being severely squeezed. And um, we, didn't, we just didn't take it seriously, right? And we're thinking, okay, so we have to get the passport. And the one thing about my wife and I, we're just real weird about this anyways. If we're ever asked to do something, like today, we'll do it tonight. We're just, we, that's how we feel about we tried to obey quickly. And that's another thing we've been taught at Osgood. That was another Osgood trait. But as time went on, 2023, right, this year, um, Viviano and Maisha had to go back. Well, God told the pastors, have us go. But guess what? We didn't have our passports. So we knew that um, there was a problem there. And uh, we felt terrible about it because... We just didn't like doing something so dumb, but I don't think we, we just didn't take it seriously. And her and I were talking about it like, you know, if it was just about money. I mean, it's just money, right? But at the same time, we were overthinking this. Um, and we're even thinking, we were thinking probably a high probability in that time, we were probably offended because somebody got pulled out and it was a bad situation. And, um, you know, we were just like, God's showing what's inside of us, right? We can't look at anybody else. So I think that's what it was. I think we were just like, when you're offended, you're like, I'll just put it off. Because, you know, if it's for you, you want to do something, you'll just, you'll go do it for yourself, right? But we put it off, long story short. And it was not good because when you put it off and you're offended or you're, you don't humble yourself to serve, and that, that was a big part of serving, you know, you can actually put burdens on other people, especially your leadership. So in this case, pastors had to go themselves and take Omisha and Viviana back. It was like this, I don't know how many hours of flying and driving, and it was like one thing after another, they got delayed. So all that was on us because, you know, we had to learn back in, we just didn't take care of it. We didn't take care of our business. And... Um, as we began to move forward, um, 
God was showing us that we have a, um, let's see, what did he call it? He called it a spiritual gap in, his, in God's timeline. So what does that mean? So when you have a spiritual gap, that means like God has his purpose, right? He has timing. I talked about it last week. There's timing. Everything he does is perfect. And he told us to do this 2020. So guess what? Things for us, even in the past couple of years, were just, we had money, but still, things were not like flowing like maybe they should. And we didn't even, honestly, we completely forgot about the, uh, about the uh, passport until Pastor brought it up recently. And then we realized that, um, yeah, God was right. That was like, uh, we, created a, we created a gap. There's a gap in the spiritual timeline. So it actually can block us, right? It can block us from being blessed, just like the scripture says. And we don't want to do that because what happens is we actually put a burden on our pastors. And so whether you live in somebody's house or you have a boss or maybe even your spouse, um, there's, God will show you, especially if you ask him, if you guys have the faith to ask him, like, how, how do you want me to serve, Lord? He will show you and be ready for it because he will have you serve whoever he wants you to serve. It's going to come out the way his and his timeline, right? But you have to be willing to do that because sometimes that happens. You're given a job. Um, he'll ask you to serve, and you get mad. You get offended. And all of a sudden, you stop doing the job. And then all of a sudden, you're starting to put a burden on your authorities. We did that. And people that actually been done to us many times. So it doesn't feel good. But, you know, we move forward. And, you know, we're here, and God's teaching all of us um, to, have, um, to be stronger in faith, right? So about a month ago, I mean, this was after um, Omisha and then went back. We thought, okay, that's it. Um, of course, even in that week, we may not have had extra money, but we just said, you know what, let's just go take care of this. And the way you do it, you have to go down to the post office, and they take the first three people and they open at 7, at 9 o'clock. So um, anyways, I go there. Um, I did prayer here, and I went, zoomed over there. And uh, there was, I was the fourth person in line. So I, I, I had to leave. Because they only take the first three for the appointments, right? You have to make an appointment. So anyway, we're thinking, like, we got to get this done. It was, like, bothering us at this point. It was weird to have done too much damage here, so... We went back again, and I think uh, this time she went early, and she was the first person there, and we got them done. So praise God. And, but again, it, it wasn't about the money. It wasn't about the time and convenience. It's about your faithfulness to serve, right? And this is what God wanted. And we were even asking, okay, is this related? But right after we did that, last Saturday, we get this pretty awesome uh, word from God about financial blessings and see when we look back at the 2020, um, um, the financial, or excuse me, the uh, spiritual gap that God had us on, we, had a, we put a gap in there because we delayed, because we didn't obey. It was part of our obedience. You know, it was disobedient. And um, so when we did that, it just fixed. And that's how, God, how good God is. He can do that for any of us. And I don't know if you guys ever noticed that. Have you ever had, like, been into a, point where you had to make a decision, and then when you make the decision, I remember the deacon, uh, Marissa and Jr., had to make a decision about getting a house, and as they're talking to pastor, somebody calls them on the phone, and they get the house they wanted. So that's how God works. That's, a lot of us want to know what God's ways are. These are his ways. His ways are, you know, he's not there with a big stick trying to, trying to hit us, but he wants us to obey. He has a timeline. He has a purpose, and you know, he wants us to go with his flow, not our own flow. So that's why when we did that, it opened the door for some things. And um, it's a possibility that there could be more things. So we just have to be, again, open about it, how to serve. And like I said, it's not just physical things here. But it could be like serving your boss. I mean, even my, my wife, she, has a, she works for a pretty big company. And she has a boss, and then there's more bosses above her boss. Well, the one boss that's above her, they're, like, trying to get her out. They're giving her a hard time. And I was just listening to her. She was actually doing a really good job, but she's actually serving her boss because her boss is very worried 
that they're trying to get her out. And she just, like, needs someone to talk to. And because she was talking to her, I can just see it. Like, you know, I felt like God was using that just to cover her boss. And, I, you know, they were laughing. And, you know, nothing worse than being in a place that you feel like you're not wanted. And that's what she was feeling like. But uh, we felt that God was using her to cover her, to serve her. So, again, if this is something that, like it says, if you want to do, even in prayer, um, we don't like delaying anymore. <laughs> but uh, when, when these things happen, ask God, show me how to serve. Show me what you'd like me to do, not the thing I want to do. Because somebody, everybody likes the pretty jobs here, right? Nobody wants to clean the bathroom. Nobody wants to, they want to be at the big jobs. But if you ask God and you do it, um, he says, you'll be like me, and I will bless you. Amen?